think that the Tour de France looked tough? Well, this might make you think again. Recently at GCM, we've been talking about how the Tour de France has changed over the last few years, but it's certainly a far cry from its first edition back in 1903. Back then, there were only six stages, but each of those were over 400 kilometers long. Riders were almost entirely self-supported, certainly without teams, and the very final stage started at nine o'clock at night, the day before the final. Could that be the inspiration for the modern transcontinental race? We're here on the iconic cobbles of the Muir van Herzbergen in Flanders, a climb that is steeped in cycling history. And it's the start of the transcontinental race, arguably the toughest race of all time. Forget the pro teams, the cars, mechanics, team buses and caravans. This is a totally different type of race altogether. The transcontinental is a self-supported ultra endurance race from here in Belgium, crossing the entire continent to Meteor in Greece. And it's not just the mega distance that challenges the 240 riders, but the format of this race. Rather than providing a fixed route, the riders must plan their own routes, taking in the four control points along the way. And they're not exactly easy either, this year featuring the Bialoe Pass in Austria and the Karkonoska Pass in Poland, as well as the checkpoints in Slovenia and Bosnia, and that last one is gravel too. Now in its sixth year, the race is organised by the very close friends and family of the race founder and ultra-endurance legend Mike Hall. They call themselves the Lost Dot, and together with a team of over 50 volunteers, both marshal the control points and will be watching out for the riders online through their spot trackers, something which they call dot watching. The 240 riders are just about to set off from here on the Muir and with the finishers party on the 14th of August that only leaves just over two weeks to complete the entire route. Some of these riders will be racing as hard as they can but others set their sights simply on finishing which is no mean feat in itself. If previous editions are anything to go by only 50% of these riders will make it to Meteor at the finish and only half of those will make it within the two week window. There are 10 rules of the race and they put rider safety at the forefront. Really the most important is the 10th rule, ride in the spirit of self-reliance and equal opportunity, which means that once they leave here, all riders are completely self-supported unless they take assistance that's commercially available to all. So whether that's getting your bike fixed in a shop, taking a meal in a restaurant, or staying the night in a hotel. So we're here with Stefan, who is arguably one of the most important people here at the start. You've got a very important job both today, the lead up to the race and tomorrow. Can you tell us what that is? I try to fix things for people who are in need of something getting fixed. It's not your first year doing this. I understand you've done it for five years. Five years. And in that time, what's the sort of most obscure thing that you fixed? Or what are some examples of the things that you've been able to help people with here on the start line? Well, I remember a girl called Katie coming in with a broken carbon bike and we managed to fix it within one day, get it repaired and she rode all the way to, in that, at that time it was uh, Turkey, so she made it. Out of the 500 people that applied for this year's Transcontinental, 240 of them are here at the start, 20 of which are in pairs. They age from 21 to 66 years old and they hail from 34 different countries from as far as India, China, New Zealand and America. For me one of the coolest things about this race is you certainly don't have to be pro to race it and you could be any ability level really. We're here with the 2015 TCR winner and friend of the channel, Josh Ibbett. Josh, what would be your best piece of advice to the riders about to set out tonight? My best piece of advice would be ride within your limits and know yourself, know your body and don't try and push yourself further than you think you need to, especially on the first night, because if you push too hard too early, you would definitely pay for it later on. So, yeah, hold back a little bit. That sounds very sensible. And from your 2015 experience when you won, what was your best memory? Can you think of just one? Um, there's probably no one set memory. It was probably very specific moments. I think actually, yeah, the, the very best memory that always sticks to my mind is when I got to the checkpoint three and I knew I'd kind of taken the lead for the first time. 
and that's the one kind of ecstatic memory because I felt like it was, you know, it was working. Yeah. I bet you're pretty stoked after that to get to the finish in the lead. Uh, well, yeah, I was just glad to survive and get there in one piece and actually be able to stop riding my bike. It's pretty miserable, really. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, Josh, who are your top three riders to watch this year? Uh, top three, I think, is experienced riders. There's probably going to be some new riders who who will be very fast, but experience counts on this race. So I think, in reverse order, uh, Burnpool, he's proven. Um, Bjorn, I, th I think he'll be second. And I think James Hayden will win. But I think he'll be very close. But I think James will come through in the final in the final few few days. I think he'll get it. Oh, we'll close. just have to wait and see. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Transcontinental Race, we'll put a link to the website down in the description and you can follow on social media using the hashtag TCR number six. If you're after some more bikepacking content, click just down here and stay tuned for our racing news show and GTN show where we'll have updates from the race. And until then, happy dot watching. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on, go on.